Texas broke records in voter turnout. Find out how it was possible in the 2020 elections. The 87 Texas legislature is set for next year. Hear why some state officials say it will be the toughest. And the University of Texas is now letting students return after Thanksgiving. We look at what they're telling students to do right now before they go home. Reporting Texas TV starts now. Good evening and welcome to Reporting Texas TV. I'm Bismarck Candino in San Antonio. Demonstrators gather at Texas Capitol on Saturday following the announcement of Joe Biden's victory over Donald Trump. Tensions ran high as both pro-Trump and pro-Biden demonstrators went to the Capitol to protest or celebrate the results. In the streets, passing cars hung to show their support for both sides. As of Thursday morning, Trump has yet to concede to Joe Biden. Following the elections, Governor Greg Abbott avoided acknowledging former Vice President Joe Biden as the president-elect. He stated the process of vote counting and recounts should play out. His statement came days after a major news outlet called Biden president-elect as results indicated that he would win Pennsylvania and uh, secure the electoral votes needed to win the presidency. So far, the Trump campaign has filed legal challenges in battleground states to block election results from being certified. Voter turnout in Travis County was up nearly 40% from the last presidential election in 2016. Early voting numbers also outpaced totals from four years ago. One reason, youth voter turnout. Alyssa Crosby has a story. Everyone was just so much more invested in this presidential election just because of everything that was experienced in the last four years. Cara Fields was excited to vote in the 2020 presidential election. She was one of the many 18 to 29 year olds who went to the polls during early voting in Travis County. And I also think coronavirus and the issue on how this country is handling COVID-19 was a really big like voter issue this year as well. Voting on UT's campus expanded this year with locations at the Flan Academic Center and Gregory Gymnasium. Even though the usual tabling and recruitment was limited due to COVID-19, political groups still got their message out. We're going to people who haven't voted yet during like the early voting period and saying, hey, you haven't voted, Are, can you please? We also uh, participate in phone banking where we will call these numbers that they put on their voter reg forms. The number of voters at UT even soared. In 2016, more than 20,000 people voted between early voting and election day. This year, early voting nearly surpassed that number without election day totals. Some hope this enthusiasm will remain in future elections. I hope that good feeling is a feeling that's felt by everyone who is in our generation that went out to vote, and that can continue to inspire us to keep voting. Fields thinks this trend will continue. Voting is a habit that you acquire just from like learned behavior and seeing what other people do. And if you develop the, this habit of voting, you're more likely to continue that later on in your life. Alyssa Crosby, Reporting Texas TV. In Travis County, a record 97% of eligible voters are registered to vote. And moving on, the 87 Texas Legislature doesn't start until January, but hundreds of bills are already waiting. More than 500 bills have been filed in the Texas House and Senate. State leaders expect that to be the toughest years as lawmakers decide on issues like abortion, cannabis, and police reform. During the 140 days legislative session, lawmakers are also required to tackle the shortfalls of the state budgets after the pandemic, as well as redrawing the state's political maps. The U.S. Supreme Court heard oral arguments on Tuesday about the legality of the Affordable Cares Act. Texas and other 17 Republican-governed states argued that Obamacare must fall if one provision was found unconstitutional. In 2017, President Trump eliminated a provision because it charged a tax penalty on those who didn't sign up for an insurance plan during enrollment. President-elect Joe Biden called the arguments a blatant political move. This doesn't need to be a partisan issue. It's a human issue. It affects every single American family. More than 100 million Americans with pre-existing conditions use Obamacare. According to the Urban Institute, an estimated 1 to 3 million Texans could lose coverage through their employer if the court voids it. Austin's crime rates are making headline after Governor Greg Abbott tweeted about an increase this year. According to Abbott, the city is experiencing the highest number of homicides in the last 20 years and threatens to reverse a city decision that cut down APD's funding as well as taking over policing some areas of Austin. 
On Monday, Lieutenant Jeff Greenwell confirmed that the city has registered 44 homicides. That's 13 cases more than this time last year, according to DPS records. What we're not seeing is any new type of crime that is leading to homicides in 2020. We're just seeing more of all the same reasons before. If the numbers continue to increase, Greenwald said APD will accept any assistance from an outside agency to make Austin safer. Another grim milestone for COVID-19 cases this week. The United States hit a record number of COVID hospitalizations on Tuesday and surpassed 1 million confirmed cases in November alone. In Texas, more than 6,000 people were hospitalized on Sunday. Texas is one of 48 states where cases and deaths are increasing. To find more about COVID-19 and testing, visit austintexas.gov slash COVID-19. In a little over a week, students will be traveling back home for Thanksgiving. The University of Texas decided students will not return after the break and instead finish out the semester remotely. Stephanie Witt found out the students traveling back home should take some precautions before they go. So prior to going home for Thanksgiving, we would encourage students to get tested uh, through the proactive community testing program uh, between really the window of November 9th and November 20th. Students can get a proactive COVID test for free. All you have to do is schedule an appointment at healthyhorns.utexas.edu. Yeah, I'm going to get tested about a few days before I go home to make sure I don't have it. That way I don't get anybody sick. Parents like Kathy Martinez believe getting tested puts everyone's mind at ease. But that's good because then it allows her to do her academics, but it also lets me know that she's safe. It's all about safety, you know, so. In order to keep high-risk family members safe, Students have to adjust to the new normal of the holidays. I don't know if I'm going to see my grandparents. I don't know if they're going to come over. I'm not even sure if my aunts or cousins will come either, to be honest with you. It might just be my immediate family. UT President Jay Hartzell told students in an email that the reason for going remote after break is to avoid the possibility of spreading the virus to other classmates upon return. Again, this is, this is temporary. Um, you know, it's not going to be this way forever, um, but in order for us to be able to continue to have you know, the Thanksgivings that we remember and want to have that this year, we do need to make those modifications. Stephanie Witt reporting Texas TV. In addition to getting a proactive community test, uh, the UT Health Services also asks students to social distance for 14 days before going home to see their families. And the UT campus experienced an increase in symptomatic and PCT COVID testing in the weeks following Halloween. But according to UT Health Services, it's too soon to tell if the increase was from Halloween gatherings. Since the start of the semester, UT has had around 1,200 positive cases and testing sites have been administering about 1,400 tests per day. The UT Health Department is now encouraging students to make an appointment and to get tested before returning home for Thanksgiving. This week, the University of Texas kicked off a first-of-its-kind two-day virtual conference on the impact of COVID-19. The conference showcased the work of the UT COVID-19 Modeling Consortium, which helped create the key indicators for staging dashboard used by the Austin Public Health. During the conference, Mayor Steve Adler said UT has handled the virus well on campus and that the consortium's work was a flashlight into a dark room. Good news for UT graduates. UT President Jay Hartzell announced on Monday in an email to students that officials were exploring options to hold an in-person outdoor commencement ceremony. Hartzell said that plans were being made to celebrate both the class of 2020 and the class of 2021 this spring. Students can expect to hear more about these plans in the coming months. Thanks for watching. Don't forget you can check out reportingtexas.com for the latest news from Austin and around the state. I'm Bismarck Candino, and for us at Reporting Texas TV, good night.